Hey guys, welcome back to the Burning Numbers podcast with just myself, Numer, and my good friend, Josh. Uh, today, we're going to really talk about what we've learned in 2020. And for me personally, I think one of the main things that I learned in 2020 was how to take a hit on the chin. With, uh, with a lot of things, especially with the pandemic, a lot of negative things have happened to many people, right? So then, and it's all come at once. And I think one thing I've really learned is how to deal with all these negative things coming at once and channel it and make it something better. What so about you, Josh? What, what experience did you have that what are you referring to? Uh, for me, it was had to do with employment. So I am, this master's degree wasn't a planned master's degree, right? I, I was actually on a bachelor's degree and uh, I was ready to finish and uh, carry on as a consultant at a company. But then once, once the pandemic happened, that company went bust and then I lost my job offer, which in turn made me think about furthering my skills in doing a master's instead. Mm-hmm. So I think that's my main thing that happened this year. So the company went bust and you took that yeah. as a negative thing towards yourself? Uh, yes, because that was a company that I saw myself growing at. Well, I was already there during my third year. Okay, and yeah. I saw myself growing like a lot in that company. Uh, I, had a, I had a good relationship with my, my seniors who actually really helped me a lot. They helped me develop. They helped me. They trained me in certain skills. And yep. certain skills that I didn't have, they actually taught me from like scratch. So then like I felt myself growing a lot there. And I think once that company went bust, it was actually quite a big hit for me. Mm-hmm. What have but you then learned? I kind of took what? it. Sorry. I'm saying I kind of took it in and I was like, it is what it is. We just move. Yeah. yeah. What have you learned about yourself? Uh, I'd say that I'm better at adapting to situations than I thought I was. <laughs> Yeah, because like uh, I've been put into so many situations in the last few years where I just didn't expect myself to be in, right? Like I, I remember so the company that I got uh, that, that went bust. I actually started there as an admin assistant, right? Like I was just there doing basic admin work, and I ended yep. up like like uh, leading some projects. So like, oh, wow. it got me to like it got me like realizing that I can adapt to situations I didn't know I could adapt to. Interesting, yeah. And uh, what was your most fun part of twenty twenty? What was my first? Can I say holidays <laughs> before the pandemic? <laughs> Where'd you go? Uh, I went to Copenhagen. Ah, very nice. Okay. Had a had a crazy one there. I had actually I got stuck there actually because of the storm that hit England. I don't even remember what storm. Storm. There was a, there was a, there was a, there was a storm that hit England in like February time. And I was in Copenhagen. I remember I tried to fly back and I got stuck in Copenhagen for three extra days. Lucky you. Did you get was like, lucky flights year? and everything paid for? Uh, I got my hotel paid for and then I got a bit of reimbursement on the flight. Nice. It was extra days of holiday. I was chilling. Yeah. What about you? What did you learn in 2020? Well, 2020, obviously, a dramatic year for everybody. But um, the biggest thing probably for me is understanding that when everything in the environment is negative you can always pull something positive away from it so the coronavirus for the economic system you had a big drop um in like the financial markets for example and obviously a big drop means everything is on sale like even everything in the shops went on sale 50 percent, 70 percent, and so forth like the company that you went to if that company survived um and they went public and they had shares their shares are going to be really low right the price yeah, yeah. Um, because they're not making any profit blah 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 so in a negative environment where everybody's like hands up uh bad everybody's losing it, it's a time for you to be really getting ahead of everybody else doesn't matter if that's uh, my example was um investing but in, in your job situation when you could for example a lot of people lost their jobs you lost your mm-hmm. potential job that is an opportunity for you to go and find a better job no, I think yeah. most people, it's like 30% of the population, again, just putting it, put it numbers out of at the sky here, but about 30% of the population is not happy in the role that they're in or yeah, yeah. was in. And so these people that are losing their jobs, it's, it's like a kick in the butt. Go find yourself a job that you actually enjoy. Right? So, yeah, I think of it in a positive true. sense like that. Um, yes, yeah, so every, every negative can, can be pulled from a bad thing. Uh, sorry every negative has a positive like a flip side right um i think in 2020 that's when i started my business you know we started all this sort of stuff and i think it's about like 
for me it taught me that productivity just comes from you and how creative you can be and being productive so a lot of people think okay i'm gonna work my ass off and um you know go work two jobs but you don't need to have a job or work for someone else to be productive and you could build something that you enjoy such as what we're doing right now yeah um so I did that with writing a book. I did that with starting my business as financial coaching. Um, we did that as this podcast. And I see much more um, opportunity where you, you can just create opportunities for yourself, right? Yeah, um, I remember like uh, one of my, I was talking to my cousin and um, she started a business off on eBay. Yeah. And she actually used all the sales that was happening. Like all, all the sales of like just random things. Like things you wouldn't even expect, like 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 toilet, like toilet accessories, and things that like like she just she just she just dropped all of them in, and she just like sold them out. Yeah, yeah. And like she she just made it. So she, like as uh she she's actually she's a housewife, so she lives at home. Um, that's that's her main thing that she does, and she essentially created an entire business through using dropshipping on eBay. Yeah. Through this pandemic, and like she's just and it's just banking up money and money and then she can still take care of her kids while she's doing it. i'm just like damn fair enough yeah yeah it's quite a, it was actually quite quite a it's quite an interesting idea actually yeah i mean also like 2020 obviously that's the year of the pandemic uh, or it might be this year as well but um <laughs> it's one of the years of the pandemic <laughs> <laughs> it's the first year of the pandemic i think i always say to people you know what i'm so grateful to be brought up in this environment because if you think back in time there's not that many pandemics that actually have happened that people live through so i'm hoping that i live through this one and if i do then i don't i, I haven't done much research into it but i don't think there's any time when people got paid by the government to sit at home and and do whatever you want to do you know you're allowed no, would, to go make no, your own business i would say there was there was this that's that's in england though specifically right because we had um there was wasn't there the sars kind of thing happening in asia yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i mean so there's I think, been loads of like yeah. plagues you know black plague spanish flu there's been lots of things like that but nothing in the sense of okay the government now or at least that i know of um you know you can just sit at home and do something but if you go back to like spanish flu whenever that was or the black plague if you got told to sit go sit at home you sit at home and you do nothing now we're in the information era and we have full technology at our advantage so we can do so much more at home and sure. so you can be so productive. You can build a business like your your family member did. Um, it was your family, your aunt, no? My my cousin, my cousin. Your cousin, that's it. Um, yeah, yeah, like your cousin did. And and so this is a good thing for a lot of people. I'm not saying as good that people are dying, but you know, you can turn you can turn the bad bad into good, right? Yeah, yeah. It is like you. I think people when once people like the the people that find this thing very negative, obviously, like again yeah it's horrible what's happening right but like yeah. people that are staying at home that are just chilling are we gonna hate on netflix again that's the question though <laughs> yeah i think i think we are <laughs> if you're gonna be productive like, and successful then yeah it's like if you choose not to be productive that's the new really i feel yeah because you have like so much opportunity so much opportunity to do anything you want in the time that you're given right because you you don't have to go to your nine to five right you you've got that eight hours extra a day that you're yeah. awake yeah vibing <laughs> yeah what'd you do with that time uh so in the beginning i'm gonna be honest I, in the beginning it was a lot of a lot of netflix right yeah yeah uh, I, I did a actually i was trying to get fit again proper fit again so uh, it got to the point where i was like doing like two runs a day i was working out doing some home workouts i was, I was that i was that guy in quarantine yeah i was doing workouts i had like the tv it was just like insanity on i'm like crying during yeah, trying yeah. to do insanity yeah. And then like, it, it, that's, that's generally what happened to me. I think for me, it was more of, it wasn't more of a case of building my skills. It was more of a case of me building myself, right? Because I think one of the main features that happened in this pandemic was like the mental health side of things, right? Yeah. A lot of people uh, weren't able to really handle staying at home. So like for me, like staying at home was a very big shock again for, for me physically and mentally. Okay. So for me, getting out there and just like going doing exercise was, was a way for me to stay mentally well yeah yeah in a way like uh i would say like uh for me my my reset my mental reset i always call it has always been playing table tennis and that got taken away 
so I had to find a new one while I was in the pandemic. Which was working out, exercise. Which was working out, yeah. Nice, yeah, yeah. I think um, especially towards the end, like the end, I mean literally the end of the year, um, I started taking like diet, nutrition, exercise, you know, quite seriously, um, which is quite interesting. But I think like, I think we t- spoke about it before, like the seven sections of your life, your, your body, your mind, your emotions, um, your finances, your relationships, um, th- those things. I... 2020 was where I kind of, you know what, I'm going to start trying to perfect these. And so like I perfected the finance side, I write a book on it. Now I'm trying the diet and nutrition and all that stuff. I'll probably end up writing a book on that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it's just really trying to work on yourself. Like stop focusing on other people. Or, and oh, one big thing, I read this quote, I can't remember who said it. I love it. And it basically said, when you wake up and you check your phone, that's you mm-hmm. certifying and making everybody else's dreams work. Like people wake up and they check their emails, right? And it, mm-hmm. an email is just something from someone else that they want. And you're going to now serve that. So the first thing you do when you wake up in your day is to serve someone else. Why don't you leave your phone, go do a workout, go read, go do something. Don't make your morning about someone else, you know? I think that's very that's, real. That's a very interesting way of thinking about it actually i never thought of it that way yeah yeah because yeah like let's be real when i when i wake up first thing i do check what's up yeah i check i check my outlook yeah and then i get up yeah yeah right and i'm like i'm gonna try it so i'm gonna try it one time i'm just gonna wake up and just gonna go and just gonna go run yeah go run. running in t- running in two degrees has been a very painful experience these days <laughs> You know, I ran this morning. It was actually quite pleasant. It was like four, five no, no, degrees. No. Spitting. This weather is all right now, but I remember I was running when it was like minus one. Yep. And I'm like hair in my snood and like three layers of clothing and running, <laughs> crying my eyes out. And then you start sweating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's all right. It's great. No. But it's like um, people, I, I would say people like for in, in, in terms of that idea, it's it's it depends on how you do it though. Because you could be checking your emails for what someone has sent you, but you could be checking your emails to see if someone's done what you wanted. Yeah, but all regarding other people and not self improvement. That's true. It's like, what? What are your? What, what would you say? Like, are the ways that you can self improve? Like, right now. For me. Yeah. So right now, obviously, I've said I'm I'm focusing on diet and nutrition, but I, 2020, kind of also taught me that like your phone is so toxic, generally. Mm-hmm um sure. so i watched a a speech a graduation in some university you know on youtube and there was this um ex navy seal um specialist and at the beginning of his speech he mentioned the first thing you should do when you wake up is to make your bed now there's actually like quite a lot of good stuff in that idea so one of the things that he mentioned is you wake up and you make your bed and that's your first task of the day and once you completed that then you've set yourself up for like a successful day and if your day then becomes like negative or not successful for any particular reason, you end up coming home to a nicer environment because your bed is made rather than scruff. You've also got the positive environment. If you spend any time in your bedroom, then because your bedroom is made, it's neat. And therefore, you know, you're more likely to be neat in your mind. Um, but if you wake up and the first thing you do is make your bed, then the more pros come to what you don't end up doing. So for example, if you make your bed in the morning when you wake up, like you literally, you wake up to your alarm turn your alarm off you get up you make a bed you're not going on your phone for example which leads back to the use of the phone in the morning so um things like that just you know trying to implement small things that make a big difference like just waking up in the morning and making your bed and like focusing on that and not getting addicted to that to the phone um the phone like it's got games on everything is made to be addictive to stop you from doing whatever you want to do um if i put my phone away from me then i can go work on my book, work on my business, do that sort of thing. Um, I'd say, I'd say, like, I've been a huge advocate of the idea of making your bed and the, like that, that idea of like when you wake up, make your bed, right? But it's it? not for the same reason I do it myself, but yep. it's not for the same reason. Mm-hmm. The reason I do it for it's, it's for the, for the idea of being in a routine, right? Yeah. It's not the idea of like, like when I, so when I wake up, again, I check my emails, I check my messages and then I get up and make my bed and then I feel like, yeah, as you said, it's your first task of the day done, like, for me that's that's the routine side of the day 
Yeah. So like, I feel like once I've done that, I can get it. I can now get into my routine. It's like the precursor to get into the routine that you, I feel like if I don't do it, your, your breaking routine. Yeah. Right. So like for me, for me, like these days have been a, a little bit busy. Right. Right. So for me, if I don't do my bed, I feel like I'm not, I'm not ready to do the other things. Right. Yeah. 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 Which is that kind of, which is that kind of mentality I put into like when I do my bed, when I do anything. Like, yeah. Like my morning is always the same. I don't spice up. things up in the morning. Get up, do my bed, freshen up, eat food, how? Time to, time to start. And I don't skip any of those, no, no matter how late I am. Because, yeah. like, the routine is important. What do you eat? Huh? What do you eat? Wheat toast cereal. <laughs> Wheat toast cereal. <laughs> uh, I've been reading, like, nutrition books and things like this, right? And uh, it's so interesting, like, how Western society has normalized, um, like, our eating habits and our dietary mm-hmm. habits. So waking up and eating uh, wheat toast, cereal, carbohydrates, um, double sausage egg McMuffin meal, all this sort of stuff is like so bad for you. And, like if you mm-hmm. think back to our like our natural selves, how we are biologically built based on our environment to survive and um, be able to use like this biological machine to the best of our ability, it was built around, you know, uh, wake up, you probably don't have much food because you need to go catch it or go take some out of the ground. It's not going to be chocolate. It's not going to be some wheat-based um, bread made. You know, it's not going to be like sausage. It's in greasy. No, but I would and... argue that because um, the one main thing about like, like again, I'm not a biologist, but the one main thing I feel like I've heard about like people this their adaptability to situations, right? The way the body adapts. Yeah to the environment that they're in yeah so i think because western society has given you all of these things to to have for breakfast or to dinner yeah your body will ad- your body adapts to it and then your body thrives on that right it's in, in it, a way it, like i understand I'm what you're saying say, but we can survive on just more. eating just eating one type of food but we're not going to get all the nutrition that we need like if you think about all the vitamins yeah, and minerals, yeah. everything like that you don't get that from one type of food and you don't get that from yeah. just eating carbohydrates sugars and bad fats yeah so you, the thing is like um wait, wait i'm actually confused what what are you wait what are you trying to say here i'm trying to say the um how westerns so western society is built up based on how companies companies control everything right companies control the information yeah, the environment control. like if you walk down the street you're seeing what the real estate that a company has built you're seeing billboards that a company has built or you're seeing buildings that companies built and yeah you're seeing people that adhere to values by a company right so yeah um what i'm trying to say is how the companies uh, companies do everything based on profit and making a revenue right and they sell all of these products and they call it breakfast so you see on advertisements you wake up in the morning you eat your porridge or whatever right um and porridge is probably the healthier example but wheatos and things like this um that's been normalized and so if you wake up and you eat something like uh, avocado eggs and kale or something which is actually healthy for you gives you all the nutrients energy everything you need right um then you're kind of like demonized by society like oh it's an outsider or somebody who's you know not doing the norm and things like this so how society has made us believe how we should eat in the morning is completely wrong yeah, I would say I, I would say society definitely has a big effect on the on like how people perceive who you are. Right? Like it's like it's like um now as you talk about the avocado, what what happened to what you said about avocado it. eggs, like, you know? Yeah, like that is that's something that's actually become just slightly more normalized. But if you had that like five years ago, everyone'd be like, "What are you doing?" But now, if you have that now, everyone's like, "Oh, that's interesting. That's something new. That's something cool, right?" Because because like there's these shops like Planet Organic. Uh, Leon and things like that are really promoting these things. Again, like it's, it's, if these companies didn't promote those things, it's like that, that thing wouldn't happen. You know what I'm saying? I like agree. It yeah, be... but it takes um, it takes. It, it's also difficult to like promote these things because all of the like the sugars and the additive, uh, addictive chemicals in the bad foods are so much nicer. So, for example, if you want to eat healthy, like if you look at the diets of people that want to slim down, um. <laughs> Zac Efron and things like this, uh, Wolverine. If you listen to those, the diets that they put themselves on, 
or they're made to be put on to get suited for a film. I mean, they're, they're a bit dramatic, but it's mostly just chicken, kale, veggies, no sweet stuff, no alcohol, no nothing, right? Yeah. And so, and they talk about how much they like, they relish and want to have those foods. And like, mm. I feel it now sometimes when I see like a, some nice burger or like juicy burger or something like cheesy, you know, I'm like, I really want it, but you, you shouldn't have it. But because you, because you've had it before and because it's so prominent, it's easy for these companies to sell it to you. Like it's so addictive. Why would you choose to eat chicken, kale, eggs, avocado, these sort of things over a Big Mac? You're going to go for the Big Mac. Cause when <laughs> I, I actually, I actually found something quite interesting, right? Go on. Which was um, like, it's, it's, this is actually like one about one of my friends, right? So, so this guy's parents never gave him like, uh, like a soda, right? Like a drink, like yes. a fizzy drink. And I remember now, it's 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 come to the point where he actually just despises them completely. Like we've yeah. made him try drink it, and then when he drank like a sip of coke at age like sixteen, like you think, bro? I say this, I have a coke on me right now. <laughs> <laughs> like this guy had a sip of coke, and he legit like threw up. Yeah. Yeah, man, because, that's so good. And I, and I was like, wow, imagine. Yeah, it's crazy. It all just comes down from your parents, doesn't it? Your it's parents like, and your you, environment, but your parents have more control. You realize how much you how much your upbringing matters, which is like, it's like let's say like for now, like I know me, so me, I know that you can't have spicy foods at all, right? <laughs> you remember, yeah. But that's because you probably never had spicy food as a kid. Actually, my parents did try to give me some spicy food, but like spicy mm-hmm. food, curries, you, like if you put a bit of chili into some sort of food, I'm probably not going to eat it. I know you didn't like you, you wouldn't have hot wings from like a chicken shop. Yeah, hot wings are spicy. <laughs> I remember I'm a, I'm a little bit more tolerable to the likes of uh chili heat wave Doritos. It's like, but it's like my, my parents gave me a lot of spice growing up, right? Yeah, yeah. I know it is a lot like compared to like my siblings i can't eat a lot of spice but like compared to you i can eat more, more spice yeah and that's because like that's because like, that's how my parents always gave me loads of spice they like like spoon fed me like chili basically yes. and then i was like i think and that's that's the point i'm trying to say is like a human's ability to adapt is like insane yeah right? yeah but it doesn't still take away the the biological processes like if you want to like it you know if you eat carbohydrates, you're going to get insulin spike. If you get an insulin spike, you're going to be able to put on more weight. It's just like the biological process is like that. It doesn't get taken away just because our body's ability to adapt. I completely agree with you in the sense of like, if you go to extreme levels, people that are blind, they're more likely to be able to have better hearing, better sense of smell, things like this. Um, but yeah, I mean, the process of a normal human being is like digestive system, your immune system is mostly in your gut. And if you're not taking care of your microbiome in your gut, then your immune system is going to be weak. If you don't sleep properly, look at the results of that. Yeah, I get. I haven't slept much these days, and my my eye bags already growing like crazy. <laughs> not <laughs> physical, <laughs> physical, yeah, yeah. I mean everything, physical, yeah. Everything really. You can you can that you can feel when you haven't had sleep. Yeah, man. It's like you like you do things slower. Like your body isn't 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 running at its full ability, right? It's like yeah. It's like a hiking experience. Like it's like when you have a car and uh, when you have a car and no petrol. Yeah. It's like that, right? Yeah, I feel like a, you know when you do. Have you ever done a workout after you've eaten? So you got you're full of energy. Maybe like an hour after eating, you're full of energy. You work out. You bust a workout. You do it really hard. And then have you ever done a workout where you've not like you fasted? Maybe you just woke up in the morning. You do a workout. Like how difficult that is. I'm going to, you know, what I'm going to tell you now, I prefer to do a workout in the morning after I've woken up rather than wait doing it after I eat food. Yeah. I mean, there's benefits to that in the sense of yeah. like your sleeping pattern. Um, you sleep much better at night if you're done a workout in the morning, because if you work out at night, then your temperature is up and we yeah. biologically need a cooler environment to sleep at. Um, but I, I'm saying, so for example, if you don't have the energy, you're not going to have to bust your ass and do the, do the workout as much. I don't true. know, like how true that is, down to the. It's, the exact. I, th- I think, um, I don't know. I don't again. I don't know like the exact thing. But I'm guess I'm saying this more on personal, personal basis, right? Uh, when you, it's like when you work out. Um, if you have food in your stomach, your like your body is working with to deal with that, right? 
So if you're doing that while you're working out, your body is kind of like in a, in a state of two minds. Mm-hmm. Whereas if, you're, if you've gone out on, a, on like an empty stomach, your body is only doing the workout, like it's only working towards you, ex- like exerting energy out. Yeah, yeah. So if that's what, that's like, I feel like that's one of the reasons why you do, when you work out, it's better to do it on an empty stomach rather than it is to do on a... Yeah, but you're taking like, the idea from if you wanted to lose weight. So for example, if you want to lose weight, wake up, you go do a jog. You're going to burn the calories, like a cardio exercise is really good. Um, you're going to burn the calories from your fat, right? Because that's all the energy you got. However, yeah. if you want to build muscle, you do a workout, you know, you start doing like deadlifts, bench press, squats, things like this. You're going to need the energy to actually push because the thing you want is to tear the muscle, not to burn the fat. So, yeah, I guess it depends on what you want to, your outcome to be. It depends on what you want to achieve. Like, like I've only ever done weight loss. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. And that's like the, the main thing people have to care about when you're doing weight loss is things like calorie deficit, right? It's like, yeah. it's like I think people people stress too much, in my opinion, about like, oh, I've got to I've got to do all these things perfectly, right? And then once they once they try it, they kind of overexert on themselves about what they have to do, and and it becomes like this thing where they just if you put too much on someone, they drop. Yeah, and I think they always weigh these things on, but it's like if you think of it as simple as you 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 release more than you put in. Mm-hmm. It's a much easier way of going through things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that was the way I, that's the way I looked at when I, when I lost weight, which was like, I, as long as I put in less than I take out, I'm fine. You know? Yeah, yeah. So 2020, what else did you learn? 2020, what else? Uh, I learned the importance of social, being social. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like when, like obviously you're always you're always used to having like your friends around with you, right? You're having your, like you're, you always probably still have your family around with you, but like it's like being able to go out and meet people, right? Like that being stripped away from you, like is a big thing, like in itself. Mm-hmm. And I think I learned the importance of it, right? Like, I realized how important it was for me to be able to like have this social social bubble that I can just talk to whenever I wanted. Yeah. Because like once that's taken away, it's it's such a it's such a, it's such a like a uh, shock yeah like, that's interesting you know? i think a lot of people have the, the same thing like like you said at the beginning the mental health situation for when mm-hmm. everybody's on lockdown is quite dramatic we're so lonely and obviously biologically we're built up in a much social even a more social environment than what you've experienced like if you think back to when it was more like tribal and it wasn't at this um I can't remember what they call it. Oh, this nuclear household with the idea of a mum and dad and, you know, like three children, two children, and that's pretty much it in our household. Uh, more tribal is like um, everybody's your aunt sort of thing. We live down the road, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think it's social. I learned in 2020 that I'm much more productive when I'm just alone without any distractions. Mm-hmm. And like for me, like my friends are probably a distraction to what I want to achieve unless I'm trying to achieve something with them. Um, and so it's very easy for me to like, you know, I'm trying to type a type on the computer and then, you know, I end up playing a game with, with somebody. I don't really do much by myself. That's pleasure. If that makes sense. So I don't really, I'm not going to go play a game by myself. That'll always be with somebody. Um, but yeah, man, I think I, I agree with you. Like uh, social, I, I have a lonely and bored. No, I have a thing with that, which is like, I, I had the opposite thing with you, right? I realized I was more, I realized that I relied on my friends too much to be productive. Okay. What do they do to make you productive? So it was like, um, so if I'm studying, right, like I'm a person who gets easily distracted. Yeah. So I remember whenever I got distracted, I got like a slap on the head. <laughs> you got a slap on the head. So like, like a, a kind of like a slap on the head. Yeah. Like, yeah by like, your okay, friends. Like get, just get back yeah, to work. Yeah. yeah. Get back to work. Do this. I see. Get back yeah, to yeah. it. So then like I realized when I when I when that was taken away, I was just like I would study for like half an hour and then you know the standard student problem, study for half an hour, take a five hour break. Yeah. Yeah. Search YouTube and you end up watching some draft exactly. Birth. <laughs> like so then I so for me I actually had to so the way like I had to combat that was I, I actually did study sessions with my friends online on Discord. Okay, yeah. Where I'd share my screen so they can always spy on me. <laughs> nice. That's a good idea. Top tip number one: show your screen, <laughs> study online. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, I, I, so the thing is, like, I, I'm still trying to work on being productive on my own, mm-hmm. but it's something that I've 
definitely need like it's it's a hard one right now i'm getting to it so you understood more about your own productivity you understood your social life's important um you learn more about your education in the sense of you needed to progress because you couldn't rely on the job that in this environment is difficult to hold or even mm-hmm. get um what else i'd say those are the main things to be fair like i'm trying to, if i'm trying to think more i i definitely learned more about my household <laughs> yeah your relationships inside your household yeah the relations inside my household like my my family is quite a busy family like we don't five people like we're a family of five five people all in the same house at the same time never happened yeah Until and now i now i quite now i now i now i just can't wait for them to get back to work <laughs> <laughs> go back to your jobs yeah, yeah. Uh, have you had any um spiritual change i would say not at all really okay and financial like, change financial change is a big one yes go on explain that hey, Again, yeah, because like uh, I, as I said, I had a I had my job throughout my third year of university, which was my primary income. It was like how I, it's like um how I funded myself throughout university was through that. Yeah. So then that financial was taken away from me. So in terms of like my financial side, it was it was quite a, I got bottlenecked right there. And it was like I have this much money to survive this long. Okay. So what did you learn? I learned how to handle my money better. <laughs> so what do you do now that you didn't didn't so, do before? So like uh, I I deleted shopping apps off my phone. <laughs> nice, yeah, yeah, good. A- ASOS is my ASOS is my worst enemy at this point. <laughs> you shop clothing, I assume. I used to, I used to yeah I just used to go on ASOS and be like oh this is interesting let me buy it. I used to buy it straight up because I realized because I could at the time and then I realized how that wasn't stable because like as soon as I lost that that stream of income coming in I was like ah oh, shit this is a yeah, bit yeah. of an awkward situation so I had to like legit just delete everything and work on spending the minimum amount for me to complete to keep my money going forward so what do you do to make sure you spend the minimum minimum amount possible uh i use i use an i use an app so i like i use my banking app to track how much i spend and it, and it, it tracks where i spend it as well nice so it's like a, it, whether it's groceries uh food things like that like it sees where i spend things and then you just like don't spend so the topic so so if i see i'm always spending it somewhere i'm like how can i spend less in that yeah. certain area so like for me it was like uh because i go to university i grab a lunch at university so i used to grab like let's say uh i used to grab like noodles which is like seven pounds all right yeah okay. we're, we're essential london zone one london baby yeah, yeah. It is. <laughs> and i it's and expensive. then like i i, I accumulate that's like 35 pounds a week or 30, 40 pounds a week yeah which is a like if you think about it, it's a decent amount of money so then i read this where can i where can i cut that down and it ended up me making lunches or me going to Tesco and again at Tesco Mildo instead. Yeah. And it drastically cut that down. Like I, I was seeing where I could cut things down and I did that accordingly. Is it harder for you to go to Tesco's rather than a noodle shop? No, it's not. It's actually easier. Nice. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So 2020, a good year for you? Uh, we'll see. The, the 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 products of 2020 haven't come yet ah so because we're just started 2020 so i want to, i want to see where the products come if if i see if i'm in a better position than i was in 2020 then yes it's a good year if i'm in the same position then no it's not a good year yeah yeah i think 2020 you know i'm luckily so far i haven't had any issues with coronavirus you know i still got my job still working um that sort of thing body mind everything's better for me so financial too so 2020 year is a good year for me so okay well, what have you learned generally though like so again you've learned about your body nutrition that's the things you've been improving on but what are you what else have you like learned yeah learn is like you kind of said like adapting to your environment so <laughs> taking advantage of a, a situation like this um mm-hmm. and kind of so in terms of like personal finance um I took advantage of like the the low markets, you know, invest more, things like that. Um, when the economy starts picking up more and jobs become more available, you can then uh, look for jobs then. So it's like understanding, my understanding of the environment and how or when you should be doing things 
like there's no point you deciding right now you want to go look for a job or change jobs right yeah and so with that understanding i become content with the job i have you know and just try to enjoy it or try to take the most of it so like planning based on uh economic results almost if that makes sense in terms of my personal finances in terms of your career your job um when i first joined peace express it was kind of on the idea that i would join and then they realized that i'm as good as i am and so the idea of a um, a promotion was going to be pretty quick and so that stopped because you know, like probably about over 100 restaurants got closed down and so you got all of these restaurant managers and people higher than me that got made redundant and so i'm no longer a viable or the best choice and so i understand there's no point in me even bother trying to either get a pay rise at the current place that i'm at or trying to get a promotion so i understand that i need to go and move on you know i, I don't think it's complicated if anybody to understand but that's just something like small in the bigger picture that i see um yeah i think i, I think in terms of that we're like we're like in separate we're like in kind of in different situations where like for you you really have your place at pizza express right Yeah. for me currently i'm a i'm still a student like i don't have a job right so for me i'm looking for a job like i i i i'm in the stage where i'm 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 kind of i've kind of made the decision on my own is which is if i'm going to get a job i want to get a job that i i know that i want to have for a while yeah obviously like there's a risk like it might not it might not be the job that i i thought i wanted right but like for me i'm i'm only like applying for jobs that i think that i want to i want to do that i want to enjoy yeah because i'm in a situation where i can do that mm -hmm. so i think that's my main thing that i've been making. that's one thing that i'm really sure that i'm doing in 2021 is like it's 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 looking for something to do that i enjoy yeah because yeah. We, we like we spoke about it before right like we and you spoke about it in your book which is like um we just put the seven se was the seven sectors of the human yeah yeah and it's like again this is mind right like for me like if i do a job that i don't enjoy like my mind's not going to be right exactly yeah so that's yeah. the one of the main things i've ensured that i'm doing in 2021 is like i'm not applying for the job for the sake of it being a job i'm applying for a job for the sake of me being able to earn money do something i enjoy yeah, yeah. you know 2020 for me also was like I, i learned stuff in a theoretical sense from reading books so for example robert kiyosaki this idea that jobs are not secure you know you should go start your own business because your business is results are based on your own personal efforts and what you can make from yourself you know and you're yeah. not relying on somebody you know if you go to if you go work for somebody that you do something that's against their rules or they don't like you you're not going to progress or you're going to get sacked you know and like a couple of small errors could be such a big deal um in your own business you can make errors and you can make up for it and so forth um and so 2020 showed me that you know your job is not it's not a safe thing it's not like a secure people go to school they learn they want to get employed and they become an employee and the whole idea of security you know get a job have a family have a house buy a car blah 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 but your job isn't secure so i think uh, for me also also a lot, a lot of that's other one thing people, 2020 taught people generally is that your exactly job is secure yeah your job is <laughs> secure and uh, yeah so that was the first thing that was the first time i saw it happen i think uh, other people who's probably a little bit older saw it in 20 uh, sorry 2007 to 2009 you know the financial yeah. crisis of that when that happened you see people losing their job you see people losing their houses you know all sorts of stuff um another thing um that i wrote in my book is like this idea of having an emergency fund and you know staying allergic to debt if you're in debt and you don't have an emergency fund um both together and not together then when you lose your job or whatever you got a ton of financial issues um mm -hmm. like you, you, when the tide goes out you can see who's skinny dipping you know so yeah you know that was the first example where i've seen loads of people in a huge amount of issues uh, financial issues because of something happened that i talk about before i've even seen it happen so it's very amazing for me to be able to before understand this and almost like preach it and then mm -hmm before i didn't have any evidence or in my own personal experience and say you know what this happened this this happened this and i was there and this is why i'm different to you guys you should be more like me now it's the case of oh yeah 2020 did happen coronavirus did happen and you guys lost your jobs and you guys had all these issues now actually you can listen to me because 
you know, I, I've i experienced the evidence as well as I can just read about it, which is good for me. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I love 2020. I, um, obviously, you know, Basir. Basir and I, every single year at the end, um, so the first, second, and third, and probably the 31st, actually, of December and then the January, we are reviewing all of the um, all of the goals we set out the previous year. We started this back in 2018, I think. And so it's very nice to see, like, 2020, we went far beyond our goals of, like, personal achievement, what we wanted, um, just things like, you know, I want to read this amount of books throughout the year. So, you know, every single target that I wanted to achieve personally for me was way overachieved. So, yeah, man, I love what it. What kind of targets do you, get, do you guys set for, like, this? Like, what kind of targets do you set for yourselves? Are you asking? Like, you get, what, okay. Uh, so, well, everything, like, what, like, what were your targets, kind of? Like, you said okay, read a certain number of books. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, in terms of, like, personal finance, it's, like, having an amount of money, you know, saved up, so having an emergency fund, investing in, like, what sort of, the type of investments that you want to invest in. Um, one of the ones for 2020 that I wanted to achieve was having a multiple income streams. So I managed to get four um, up and running by the end of 2020, which was wonderful for me. Um, I wanted to, in terms of my education, I wanted to, I always was an advocate of reading, but as a child, I didn't really grow up to read much or enjoy it. And so every single year, I'm increasing, increasing the amount of books that I read or how much I read. So that become a big thing for me. I also had more time during furlough, but it was nice to see when I go back to work and things like this that I'm also reading then. So I read a lot more books um, than than I did every other year. Um, so I had a target of once a month that I, I read more than that. Um, so yeah, so everything's like education, finance, body, um, I didn't gain dramatic weight. Um, I kind of stayed the same sort of strength as I was before. So I didn't really have goals based on that. So I didn't really focus on that and therefore I didn't improve much. But this year, body is a big thing. Nutrition, diet, um, really trying to like sleep also. Just trying to maximize my own. I see my body as like a physical machine. And like, I don't believe in like a soul or a mind. But if you think about that, it's like your soul is the driver of this machine. Or your thoughts, mm-hmm. your brain, whatever you want to think about it. And so how do you maximize? Like if you've got a diesel car and you put petrol in it, you're not going to be driving very well, right? Yeah, yeah true. It's not going to work. Um, and if, if you've got um, if you've got coolant in your in your coolant for your car, if you just put water and no coolant, it's going to freeze overnight mm-hmm. when it's in the winter. So I'm thinking much more about like, if I want to achieve better, you know, do better in business, do better in my career, do better in my relationships, everything like that. I and mean, it comes from start taking care of yourself, educate yourself, and then, you know, put into action what you learn. So that's what I'm trying to do now. And, you know, it's difficult, man, especially because there's a society or, you know, friends, family, anything like that. If they're, if they're different to how you want to become, then it's difficult. True. Anyways, yeah, I think, uh, I think we're going to cut it there. We're that was the Bang Numbers there. podcast. Uh, see you uh, soon in the next one thank you